Z3 has gotten a bad rap recently, and despite all of its issues, being a gooner game isn't one of them. Now what is a gooner exactly? A gooner, or a goonette, is somebody who is essentially addicted to adult videos and self-pleasure. A gooner game is exactly what it sounds like. A game that's marketed and made for gooners. I've seen a ton of people calling Z3 a gooner game on social media recently, and there is something I always notice among these people. They either don't play gacha games in general or don't play Z3, and are solely judging it based on its marketing. This recent spike in gooner game allegations was due to Jane Doe's trailer and character demo being extremely suggestive. If you're someone who's only seen the adverts, then I 100% understand why you would think Z3 is a gooner game, but I promise you it's not. At at least not compared to its peers. Let's take a look at some actual Gooner games and see how Z3 compares on the Goon scale. Anything that scores above a 5 out of 10 is a certified Gooner game. Let's begin. First up is the easiest one, Nikkei Goddess of Victory. This one is actually really easy to talk about because I used to play Nikkei a lot, and while I'm not a gooner, I definitely wasn't playing it for the gameplay. It's advertised as an immersive sci-fi shooter, but calling it that is a bit of a stretch, while still being technically correct. It is in the sci-fi genre, it is a shooter, and it can be immersive. And that's what gives Nikkei a pass when someone tells me that they play it. The world is immersive. I don't think anyone who's actually played the game would disagree with me when I say Nikkei has some of the best written characters and story in all of Gotcha. So I can believe if someone says they genuinely just play it for the story. But what about the Gooner aspect? Is it marketed for Gooners and actually contains content catered towards Gooners in game? An overwhelming yes to both of these questions. Nikkei doesn't try to hide or be subtle about its target audience at all. In fact, I left out one part of its marketing slogan earlier. The full quote is, Immersive sci-fi shooter with adorable Nikkeis. They're very up in front about the fact that the girls are what's supposed to pull people in. But it doesn't stop with just attractive characters. Your character in-game dates, marries, and sleeps with multiple of the girls. There are countless suggestive situations you're thrown in, whether you end up in the shower with one of them, a hotel room with only one bed, or win a bet and end up in a threesome. Yeah, that actually happens. But you may be thinking, well, what's the gameplay like? Does the goon stop once you're in combat? Allow me to show you some combat. So, you take attractive characters of all types, throw them in the most revealing outfits or tightest clothes possible, mark it with no shame, and then add the ability to romantically and sexually interact with these characters, and you have a textbook gooner game. On the goon scale, Nikkei gets a 10 out of 10. Please change your pants when you're done playing. While Nikkei is the easiest example, let's move on to another that's a bit more interesting. Snowbreak Containment Zone. Snowbreak is an interesting case. It's actually a really good game and I played a bit of it at launch. It's a third person shooter which is extremely rare in the gacha space with a surprising amount of polish. And honestly, when the game first came out, it would have scored really low on the gooner scale. But due to weak marketing and a lot of technical issues, the game wasn't really popular when it released. So they did what they know would bring in money. They got naked. Okay, not like actually naked, but they basically went full goon. Double down on the jiggle physics, characters are either very revealing or in skin tight bodysuits, and they added an interaction system. And if you're not familiar with gotchas, most of them have some sort of rapport or interaction system where you can talk with your units to build an emotional attachment to them. It's basically to help players get more attached to the game so they are less likely to drop it. But Snowbreak decided to take a note out of Nikkei's book and made it so you can really interact with the units. I won't go into further detail because I'm sure you get the picture, but here's what makes this an interesting case. Snowbreak didn't seem like it was going in this direction when it first released. Sure, the characters were visually appealing, but most of them were nearly fully covered up and the jiggle physics weren't really noticeable. I was honestly more drawn into the gameplay and the combat rather than the characters. And the story, while kinda slow at points, is overall not bad. It's rare to see a game switch focus like this, but I've seen their revenue go up since swapping to Gooner Bait, so I guess it worked. But would I call Snowbreak a Gooner game? Honestly, yes. With a caveat. While the current marketing and interaction mechanics are 100% Gooner Bait, the actual gameplay and story are really solid and involve little to no Gooner material. On the Goon scale, I'd give Snowbreak a 7 out of 10. Probably want to close your door when you play this one. Next is Blue Archive. Wait, the characters are howled? Next is Love in Deep Space. That's right, this one is for the goonettes, the girls and the gays. This one is very clear in its objective. You're supposed to date and build relationships with these characters. You may be thinking, well, if it's a dating sim, shouldn't it get a pass? 
Hell no. Just cause you're a dating sim doesn't mean you're immune to being called out for being goon bait. Not every dating sim is a gooner game, but this one is. So I've never actually played Love in Deep Space, so I wanted to look up some gameplay to see if maybe the gameplay would separate it from the goon material, but it's a dating sim at its core, meaning all the gameplay is just talking with the characters and living your life. Future Mantra is here, so there is actually gameplay for Love in Deep Space. It's just pretty mediocre. I, I, I highly doubt it gets any better than this. I mean, if there's some hardcore Love in Deep Space players, please let me know if the combat gets better. But from what I'm seeing here, this looks pretty mediocre. But it still does technically have combat, so sorry about that mistake. On with the video. And the uh, interactions that they mentioned before, you can look those up for yourself. So, while it is intentional, Love in Deep Space still gets an 8 on the goon scale. Certified gooner game. Or, I guess goonette game, because I think uh, straight women are their target audience. But, you know, who doesn't like abs, right? With those examples out the way, let's compare the previous certified Gooner games to Z3 and see where it lands on the Goon scale. The first piece of evidence that people will bring up for Z3 being a Gooner game is Jane Doe's trailer and demo. And they are absolutely correct. Jane is very, very, very obvious Gooner bait. However, are the other characters like that? The short answer is no. Don't get me wrong, there are suggestive camera shots and outfit choices for characters. Somebody get that child some clothes! But it doesn't cross into the territory of being a main focus in the game and that's supported in the actual gameplay. Once you reach endgame, 80% of your time is going to be spent either in combat or doing TV puzzles. You can't date the characters or have any romantic or sexual interaction with them. The most you can do is invite them over to watch movies or go out and eat some noodles. The story contains no goon material whatsoever and the most you'll get in the cutscenes is maybe a sus camera angle. Well, that's about it. All of the quote unquote goon bait is done in the promotional material and is an obvious attempt to get more eyes on the game and more people talking about it. Since the goon material is near non-existent in game and and only done in promotional material, I'll give Z3 a 5 out of 10. It's right on the line of being a Gooner game, but due to the lack of in-game Goon bait, it doesn't quite deserve the title of Gooner game. In conclusion, from the outside looking in, Z3 may seem like a game made for those addicted to the pleasures of flesh, but in reality, it's actually quite tame compared to the actual Gooner games. It just doesn't reach the qualifications needed to be considered among the likes of Nikkei, Brown Dust 2, etc, etc. For anyone still watching, I just want to say that while the title may sound very matter of fact, I am actually open to different interpretations of the games I talked about today. While I have extensive experience with Nikkei and Z3, I've only played Snowbreak for a few weeks and never played Love and Deep space, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong or kinda off on certain points. Other than that though, I'm gonna dip. Be easy. Oh, and I'm sorry about my voice, I'm sick. I don't know what the fuck is going on with my throat. Feels like, feels like someone like took a crow with like really sharp claws and like shoved it down my throat and let it just like scratch like my throat up because it feels like shit right now and it hurts. Okay, bye.